I'm Tyler Anderson and welcome to another episode of Skeeter School. In this video, you're gonna learn some of the tips that I use when I'm operating or maintaining my Skeeter boat. But be sure to read your owner's manual for a complete guide on operating and maintaining your Skeeter boat. Well, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to Skeeter School. My name is Tyler Anderson and our goal here on this series is to make sure that you guys as bass boat owners are fully equipped to, to handle any problem that may come about when you're on the water. And this video is so incredibly crucial because if you don't understand what's going on with your electrical system back there in the back of your boat, here at the, uh, at the, at the dash, as well as up there on the nose, you're not gonna know how to deal with problems when they arise. So I say we get the boat back on the trailer and talk about kind of the overview of the electrical system. Welcome to class. So I remember the first time I ever picked up my first Skeeter when I was you know, 12 or 13 years old with my dad and opening up the back compartment back here with all the batteries and accessory wires, I was confused. I thought, what the heck is all this? I'm never gonna know what to do if something goes wrong. And that's just not the case. If you take it bit by bit and look at every single you know, key component and learn what that does, you will be so much more knowledgeable about how to fix issues that may arise inside of your Skeeter boat. And the first of those being the Perco switch. A Perco switch as, as, as a whole, kind of what it functions uh, to do is to cut off the power supply from your main cranking battery to the engine and any accessories throughout the boat. But something awesome that we have here in my Skeeter boat, my FXR, is that the Perco switch also has a built-in function that can take the charge from one of my trolling motor batteries and move it to the main cranking battery to be able to start my engine if I'm stuck out there on the lake without a functioning starting battery. So that's what the Perco switch does and there's an awesome helpful diagram here to show you exactly how it's wired. Now if you're out there on the water and something isn't working, your electronics are turning on and off, your uh, you know, shallow water anchors won't go down, something might be tripped and the thing that might be tripped might be your breaker and a breaker is basically an oversized fuse and we have two breakers here for all of the dash and fish finder you know electronic systems and then i've got one breaker on the other side of the boat here in the back that is for the trolling motor so like i said if something isn't working the first thing you should do should not be get frustrated it's not working the first thing you should do is open the compartment back here and check to make sure that the breaker is not tripped here's what it looks like for a breaker to be tripped that little tab there is down and to reset it is super easy. You just push that right back up. Now the last thing to be aware of here in the back of the boat is going to be your power distribution block. What this is is a, is a center where all of the cables come in from your main cranking battery to send power from this center here to all of your electronic accessories. So your shallow water anchors, your fish finders, everything at the dash, any other accessories you may install in your boat. If they are not working properly or not working at all, it's totally possible something is wrong with this center. It could be a loose connection, a loose wire going into this. It could also be one of the fuses that we have down here on the center. You wanna make sure you're checking that before you get frustrated on the water. That could be something that is causing you to have electronics issues. So that is it for the back side of the boat here in the battery compartment. And one last thing to be aware of is where your main uh, fuse panel is. Here in my FXR, it is underneath down by the hot foot, underneath my console. And this is where all the main fuses for every other piece of electronics on my boat are underneath here. So now that we've gone over the main electrical system of a Skeeter boat, I say we head back to the house to give some tips on battery charging to keep this system running. Now making sure that your batteries are actually charging is a crucial part of making sure that the next time you go out, you have charged batteries and a fun time out there on the water. And so when you plug in your boat, you wanna make sure that two things are true. One, that your charging cable is not at risk of being pulled and thus detached from your boat's charging system. So what I like to do here, my throttle, no matter where I'm charging, anywhere across the country, here at home in the garage or anywhere I travel, I do one little loop around, that was not a loop, one loop around the throttle. That way, if anything pulls it, it cannot pull the actual head of the cable here from the boat. And then I plug it in. That's the first thing I do, make sure that the cable can't be really pulled out. And the second thing, I, I come here to the back of the boat and I make sure that my onboard battery charger's light is on. The light is on, the batteries are receiving a charge. Now, one thing you might not be thinking about when charging your batteries is the actual cable you use. Your extension cable matters, and you don't want to use one that's too thin. And so when it comes to thin cables, really two disadvantages. The thinner the cable, the less power it can, it can transfer from your power source and send to your battery charger. 
and thin cables also have a tendency of overheating. And you don't want to find that out. When the cable overheats sometime throughout the night, it trips your electrical system, your breakers and fuses, and so you're, you get to the boat in the morning to go fishing and you don't have any charge in your batteries. You don't want to find that out in the morning. So it is so important to just right now go invest in one or two high quality cables like this one, as opposed to this one, which is thinner, and this one, which is even thinner. You want to have some really high quality charging cables. So thank you all so much for joining us on another episode. I hope this gave you some helpful tips and reminders when it comes to all the intricacies of your Skeeter electrical system. My name's Tyler, and we'll see you guys next time right here on Skeeter School. So now that we've gone over the main electric system of a Skeeter bass, it's not just a bass boat, they have bay boats, electronic thing here on the boat. Now is that an electronic thing Electron, it was an electronic thing. That's the second time that guy's come down to the lake. <laughs> this is so funky. All right, there we go.